All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today, we're continuing with experimental design and D7, distinguish among reversal, multiple baseline, multiple element, and changing criterion designs. Now, in this video, what we're going to go over are different baseline logic aspects of each of these designs, when to use the, the designs, some strengths, and some weaknesses. What you should be doing as we go through each of these is in your head, start to picture what each design may look like. And then start to think, how would I visually analyze each design to look for positive changes, unpositive changes, experimental control, so on and so forth. That's really what we're gonna be covering here. We're not gonna spend time dissecting individual graphs. What you should be doing as practice during your experimental design time is each time you're going through this section, or let's just say as you go through questions or fluency drills, use five, 10 minutes to go into Cooper or other graphing books and just pick out graphs and start to analyze them. It's the best way to get good at those, especially ones that combine different types of designs or some of the more unconventional designs. But as always, we're going to boil it down to what we think is the essential pieces and make it as simple as possible. Be sure to subscribe if you aren't already. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. All right, so each single case design demonstrates experimental control through different logic and procedures. Our main ones, reversal multiple baseline, multiple element, and changing criterion. Now, there are variations on the reversal, variations on the baseline, variations on the multi-element. But with these videos, we are starting at the top with the essentials, right? You've got to have the fundamentals down before you dive into the deeper stuff. That's where we're going to begin. Now, let's look at reversal designs. Demonstrate control by withdrawing and reintroducing intervention. It's your classic A, B, A design. Multiple baseline designs demonstrate control through staggered, staggered introduction across baseline. So if we have our standard multiple baseline, we're gonna have a concurrent design where one participant gets intervention and we remain in baseline for the rest. The other common design associated with multiple baseline is the multiple probe. Multi-element designs demonstrate control by rapidly alternating between conditions. So you might look something like this, where you have different conditions at different times, right? And we connect those, we connect those, and we're looking for what condition is having the effect. And then change the criterion designs, maybe one of the least used because of the fact that the behavior already exists and the behavior has to be very sensitive to changing criterion, but it is one. We're demonstrating control through systematic stepwise changes in performance requirements. So example, a behavior analyst treating aggression might use reversal if behavior is reversible, multiple baseline if reversal is unethical, multi-element to compare two treatments or changing criterion if gradually shaping behavior reduction. So just like with measurement, our design is dependent on what we're trying to achieve and what we're trying to show. Let's start with the reversal design. Probably the most common outside of the multiple baseline. It's your simple A, B, A design. Now you can have uh, multiple treatments, right? You can do A, B, C, A, something like that. A, B, A, C, so on and so forth, right? but we're just sticking to the simple fundamentals. Now, reversal designs, we established experimental control by demonstrating that behavior changes when intervention is added or taken away. And it's the strongest type of experimental control because we're actually removing the intervention altogether. It's a very simple structure, right? We have your baseline, we have your intervention, and then we're back to baseline. Remember your baseline logic, prediction, replication, and verification. Logic, if behavior returns to baseline levels when intervention is removed, 
intervention controls the behavior. Now, of course, the more we do this, the more we do the reversal, the stronger the case. But if we are seeing a distinct change from baseline to intervention back, then there's a good chance experimental control exists in some capacity. Replication effect is replicated within the same subject across time periods. All right, so we are replicating the treatment effect and the intervention with the same subject at different points in time. When, when might we use it? Sorry, when might we use it? When behavior is reversible. So if we can actually reverse behavior, so be careful with academic skills, for example. If I teach someone two plus two, it's gonna be hard to reverse learning two plus two. Is it ethically acceptable to withdraw treatment? If there's some severe hair pulling going on, is it okay to withdraw a treatment knowing the hair pulling might come back? And then if you need the strongest demonstration of experimental control, reversal design is typically best. Multiple baseline designs demonstrate control by introducing intervention at different times across multiple baselines while others remain in baseline. Changes should occur only when intervention is applied to each specific baseline. So if we think about it, we have our baselines and we might intervene here and then we have some changes. What are we going to do in the others? Baseline keeps on going and we might intervene here, change. And then we might intervene here, right? So baseline continues, continues until intervention begins. We should only see change when intervention is applied to the unique baseline, right? And not earlier in the sequence. So multiple concurrent baselines with staggered intervention introduction. You can also run them non-concurrently in certain situations. If only treated baselines change, untreated remain stable, intervention likely controls behavior. Replication, we're replicating the effect across multiple baselines. It can be subjects, behaviors, or settings, right? So participants, same behavior, different people. Across behaviors, different behaviors, same person. Across settings, same behavior, person, different context. Multi-element designs, rapidly alternate between two more conditions within the same phase to compare their effects. Different conditions are distinguished by unique discriminative stimuli. So if we think of a situation, spelling words, Okay, spell, spelling. And we have a game scenario, no game scenario, and then game and snack. Each one has distinct discriminative stimuli. And then we're just going to go ahead and alternate all of these conditions. And at the end, we'll connect data points and get a little something like that, right? So rapid alternation between conditions. So it could be multiple times. If behavior systematically differs between conditions, the condition controls the behavior. So if we have a condition down here and we're trying to, for whatever reason, reduce spelling, then this is very distinct in the success. Each condition paired with distinct visual cues, times, locations, or people, so there's no secret or tricks. And then compares to focus. We're trying to compare effectiveness of different treatments or conditions. When should we use these? When we're comparing multiple interventions for the most effective, when you can't withdraw treatment, you also don't need a baseline necessarily. Changing criterion designs, so ignore that term. We are looking at changing criterion designs. They demonstrate control by systematically changing the performance criterion in a stepwise manner. What does that mean? Well, it might look something like this, where your starting criterion is here, and you want behavior to sit right around that criterion. Now. If you go down, you want behavior to sit right here. If behavior plummets to, let's say, here, maybe it's good, but it doesn't necessarily demonstrate experimental control, which is why changing criterion designs can be tricky because you need behavior to stick right around the criterion to demonstrate control. So you can start with a baseline and then your intervention with initial criterion and then a series of phases with progressively changing criteria. If behavior matches each new criterion as it changes, the intervention more likely controls the behavior. Gradual shaping, criterion changes in small achievable steps toward ultimate goal. The smaller, or the, I should say, you want to vary your criterion changes, right? And the more criterion changes you can make, the stronger the proof. And then bi-directional changes, sometimes criterion increases, then decreases the strength of demonstration. 
So if you go down, 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 and then back up, and the behavior goes like this, that's a good sign. When should you use? Gradually shaping behavior toward a goal. So the behavior should already exist, and maybe you just want to shape it within some sort of magnitude. Behavior is not easily reversible, or a goal requires incremental progress, where you can't change something overnight. Now, being able to identify designs for visual data is essential for consuming research literature and designing studies. So your visual identification cues might include a, for your reversal, a single data path with phase changes and behavior reversing direction. Multiple baseline, you might have multiple stack graphs, and this is one is pretty easy to identify typically, with vertical phase lines at different times. Multi-element, you've got a single graph with multiple data series. What can be confusing is you can sometimes have a situation where you have multiple elements and then you change and you try to go use just one for the best available. And then changing criterion, single data path with horizontal criterion lines that step up or down across phases. Now, strength and limitations, reversal. Strong with control, but requires reversibility and ethical withdrawal. Multiple baseline, no withdrawal needed, but requires multiple independent baselines and extended baseline for later treated baselines. Multi-element, rapid comparison, but risk of carryover effects and requires discriminable conditions. And changing criterion, gradual shaping, no reversal, but behavior has to be sensitive to criterion changes, behavior has to exist, and it's hard to demonstrate control. So there you have it. Distinguish among reversal, multiple baseline, multiple element, and change criterion. The fundamentals are pretty straightforward. You want to know them very, very well. And then as you practice and as you do fluency in questions, go in each, each day and review one or two graphs. If you do that every day for two weeks, this becomes very, very straightforward. As always, check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. Check out our new mini mock series that we just started this week, if you're watching this video when it came out. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout-out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.